let's see. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, I think we are live. I am hoping I'm going to um, kind of open up, I guess, the chat box, um, see who is on. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, and I'll try and address them either now during this live session or um, afterwards um, or afterwards um, in the um, in the chat as well. So um, I wanted to say welcome. Um, and good evening. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Aaron Roberts here for Wellbeing Wednesday. Um, I hope that you are all well and staying healthy. I'm the director of the wonderful ECU Family Therapy Clinic in Greenville, North Carolina, um, which has been seeing individuals, couples, and families of ECU students, um, employees, and community members of um, Eastern North Carolina for over 25 years. To start, I would like to announce that this is my very first Facebook Live talk. And as someone who hits right there in the middle between an introvert and extrovert, I think we're called ambiverts, um, talking to a blank screen um, while others watch me is kind of like being like asking the introvert to public speak and the extrovert to interact with no one at the same time. So it is terrifying. Um, but um, I will assume that you're laughing at all of my jokes and nodding seriously for the rest. So um, I hope the wind doesn't give us any trouble. Well, let's go on ahead to our talk. Our talk today is Managing Quarantine, um, the Marriage, Family, and Partner Edition. Our amazing liaison in, um, in public relations or media relations, Matt Craven, came up with this title, which I think is absolutely brilliant because it puts the focus on managing onto what actually is the big change in our life right now, and that is quarantining and COVID-19. Okay. However, for some of you, I think, including um, myself, the coping with and managing may have been on some of the, maybe some of the other nouns in the title, such as marriage, family, partner, or even children. So how do we cope with those um, when we, of course, we love dearly, but we are in close quarters with for an indeterminate set of time? I mean, are we even supposed to like ask that question as far as coping kind of with family members? It seems almost wrong to ask sometimes. So of course we love our families and we wanna enjoy our time with them. However, I think that since COVID-19 kind of entered our lives, that sentence has kind of expanded. I think since thanks greatly to social media, um, but instead of asking, okay, so of course we love our families and wanna enjoy our time with them, it has expanded to, you know, we wanna cherish every minute, braid flowers in our kids' hair while they recite the times tables and theory of relativity while simultaneously um, or the rest of our family is running the COVID Olympics in our front yard and our, with our kids and our spouse that have dressed up like Harry Potter and, you know, in period costumes and we're all being photographed professionally um, on our front steps and having our, family picture, make those posts in Facebook that go all around America. Whoa, way too much. So that is just our personal lives too. We are also attempting to work from home, provide meals, have a clean environment in our household, search for toilet paper. Where is all, where is all the toilet paper gone? Um, all of that is a recipe for stress. So change and uncertainty cause stress. Potential danger to our livelihoods and our lives cause stress. Potential, um, our and some of our also some of our greatest protective factors too so our social relationships outside of our family our extended family our friends that has become more limited and also some of our activities too that we love have also become um, limited and some of our co some of our coping pieces have decreased and so um sorry i just touched my face okay so if you are like me um or like many other people that i know um this event well it has provided some so much wonderful time with family, time that maybe we had um, dreamt about while working um, late hours or long hours on the on the weekends. Um, wouldn't it be great to have more family time? Now we have that, and in experiencing some of this challenge, we may feel a little bit guilty or bad about admitting that it has been challenging to be in the same place with um, those that we care about deeply. Okay, but we're also feeling the challenge of the change that has just occurred. So we have accepted so many new roles from homeschool teacher to telecommuter, WebEx professional, Zoomista, Xbox fixer, 
so many new roles and having to navigate those roles with our children and with our partners in a brand new routine of life. Okay. Who like things like who is going to fight with the child over the math homework? Well, you, of course, because you have more patience. Okay. Well, that can be like, thanks for the compliment, but, um, do you really just want to take your chances with the child who's sleeping so that you can go watch some Netflix? Okay. Things that we not wouldn't roles that we wouldn't think that we would ever have to navigate. So it's natural that as our roles and tasks have increased, while our routine has changed, that there are going to be challenges, bickering, snapping, misunderstandings, and misinterpretations along the way. Know that you are not alone in that. So it is funny. So one of the reasons why living together in the first year um, can be so hard is because you're trying to navigate new roles, routines, and tasks. Well, bam. This pandemic has managed to create this intense experience for all of us to have together, all while in isolation, right? So we are creating brand new dynamics together, which if it's going well, then that is great. But for most people, okay, adapting to this change, there's a lot of wind, um, to the wind blow. But for most people, adapting to this change in this soup of what I have just described, this boiled down soup, the birth of these new dynamics can be what we as therapists like to cause, call a positive reform, free frame for, dear Lord, the sound of your breathing makes me run screaming from this house, okay? It can be so challenging, it's hard, and it is life altering, okay? So the first thing that I can offer you and give you is validating that this is hard. And that while you may be experiencing, I mean, unless you are the couple that is braiding each other's hair blissfully, um, it, it's very common what is happening. I've heard from everywhere, from from um, from family members, friends, um, colleagues, um, clients. It is everyone is experiencing quite a bit of challenge. So there is nothing bad or wrong with your relationship if you are experiencing this, which is out of the ordinary for what you generally experience. Okay, it's interesting. Some people talk about this time um, for relationships like it's truth serum that like, whatever your relationship is like right now is indicative of the truth of how it actually is. Throw that out the window, okay? Nothing about this, about COVID, about quarantining, about the pandemic is normal, and everything about this is stressful, okay? Secondly, while I would like to offer you an easy solution, I cannot. And frankly, and if there is a therapist that offers you easy advice, you should probably run very quickly. Like that zombie that ran for me in the Halloween haunted corn maze after I told him that I was a therapist and asked if he would like to talk about anything, um, he ran. And so should you from a therapist that offers easy advice. So what I can offer you is some information about someone who did research on something similar to what we are experiencing on a very a much smaller and less pandemic um, scale back in the 90s. So a family therapist by the name of John Gottman created a love, what he calls a love lab, okay, where he would invite a couple to come in and live in an apartment and not leave for a few days. Okay, now again, much smaller scale, just a few days of not leaving. They were invited to bring things to do and they were hooked up to several biofeedback monitors to measure their heart rate, breathing rate, cortisol levels, etc. And while they were in this apartment together where they could not leave, Again, um, he tracked in the relationship, um, their, their um, interactions with one another. So he tracked their relationship outcomes over time, um, afterwards, and he measured in real time bodily reactions during their couple interactions. He looked at what makes relationships successful and what makes them fail. And in marriages, he actually could predict with a 91% accuracy rate which couples would stay together. Okay, And then absolutely which ones would split up too. Okay, so he's written several books, um, and but in the interest of time, let me just share with you some of his findings on what can erode a relationship and what can enhance a relationship. These are things that actually predicted the erosion of a relationship. And in fact, um, Gottman found they were so catastrophic to a relationship that he called them literally the four horsemen of the relationship apocalypse. Yeah, a little dramatic, but... Okay, so I will, I'm will. i going to um, go through these with the aid of a few co-presenters. So the first is criticism. Okay, so let me get this one. Here we go. This is my daughter's. So this one looks pretty, right? Okay, because 
criticism. Everyone needs feedback. And you know, what if someone can't take constructive criticism? They, everybody needs to have a little bit of a thick skin, right? No. See this horn here? Straight to the heart. And these hooves just erode at the life of the relationship. So criticism is different than addressing a specific complaint that you may have, a ta about, have about a task being done or a specific action. Okay, so, so those are actually very healthy for a relationship when done in kind of a, a healthy, loving, and caring way is to share your complaints with others. But criticism is different. Criticism negatively addresses a partner's character or personality, such as why are you so negative? Or why do you always put your friends, your hobby, or uh, other relationships in front of me? Or you never used your time wisely. Or you are so selfish. Those kind of things are the criticism that Gottman says is really harmful. Next one is contempt. So this is a double whammy, okay? Also very pretty, okay? So notice both unicorn and pegasus, okay? The wings and the magical horn that can cut to the heart of you like a poison arrow. So this is contempt, okay? So Gottman says that contempt is akin to disgust and can double, um, so it can double the work that criticism does. Okay, so when we convey contempt to, um, to others, that this can be in the form of sarcasm, okay? Um, it can also be like name calling, eye rolling, mocking someone. It can be absolute poison because it conveys to the person that they are not worthy. So it can also lead to more conflict as well. Okay, so moving on to defensiveness. Okay, here we go. Woo! Defensiveness. Yep, it's hard to get around this one. So every time that there is a complaint and complaints can be very, very healthy in a relationship, as I said before, it is blocked by defensiveness, okay? So this is blocking, this is, um, oftentimes a person doesn't realize they're doing it. They can be do, and they could also be doing this to kind of protect them from um, like these pretty unicorns over here, criticism and contempt. It moves the problem talk into, well, I hear you're, you are saying it's me, it's actually you, okay? Which is the opposite, I guess, of the proverbial breakup talk of it's not you, it's me, but, you know, I digress. Um, you know, this can eat up at a relationship um, because we get away from solving anything. So this is blocking any sort of relationship feedback that comes along. Okay. So finally, our last horseman, let me see if I can find, oh, okay. Here's our last horseman. Looks so innocent and sweet. In fact, I think that she was on the cover of the Briar Horse catalog last month. Okay. This is avoidance. Okay. Or what Gottman calls stonewalling. So while conflict avoidance may seem like a great way not to argue or start an argument, you may say, okay, I'm a, just a peacemaker, right? What happens is this conflict piles up until someone explodes or things aren't discussed um, that can actually bring a couple together. So this might look like agreeing just to avoid conflict. We can actually create resentment in the person that is just kind of agreeing and stuffing it into that small box inside. Um, so this can look like nodding, saying, yeah, okay, sure, whatever you wish. And what, this seems nice, right? No, not nice. Horsemen. Okay, so how do we corral these horses and help to enhance the relationship according to the decades of research that Gottman has done? So one of the things that, um, that Gottman mentions is really getting to know your partner. Okay, so this also means knowing yourself really well too, so you'll be able to answer these questions. So in this book, so this is what um, a lot of this is taken from, so this is the seven principles of making marriage work, although really this book has um, a lot with just couples work in general, okay? And so this can really apply to many different types of relationships. And so um, in this book, they have, um, they have what are called um, enhancing your love map. Okay, so these are questions that you can ask um, to kind of get at knowing one another um, and knowing one another again, right? Enhancing your love map seems like a great adventure, okay? So of course we may be thinking, I know my partner. I know when my partner goes to the bathroom in the morning. I know how they, and how they have the superpower to snore through five walls. I know my partner inside out. Well, the truth is, you know, although we continually get to know one another just by being around one another and living in the same um, household with one another, if we are living with them or quarantining with them, um, we also stop asking many of those key questions to get to want, know one another um, after we stop dating them, okay? So questions like, what was your best childhood experience? If there was one thing that you would want to do in this world, what would it be, okay? Or what was your best unrealized dream? Okay, those are key questions that would be, you know, to, to bring you all together and to help get to know um, one another a little bit more dynamically. 
Okay. So one of the most interesting things too um, was taking a leadership inventory uh, style inventory with my spouse and realizing that while I was coming from mostly a relational and idea driving perspective, he was kind of coming from, he was coming from a get it done and analytical perspective. Okay. So in, in talking with um, him, we really, we really talked about um, how that makes things um, and where, where our perspective is coming from different in our relationship. So I'll post a link to that if you all are interested. Um, note in the comment box if you are, I'd be happy to list that. So the other six, I know we're running um, a little short on time. There are six others um, that include nurturing your fondness and admiration towards each other, turning towards each other instead of away, letting your partner influence you, solving your solvable problems, um, overcoming gridlock, and creating shared meaning. This is one that I, I think is most important, and I believe that we are all in this together, and we're making these memories together, um, good, bad, and in between. Um, so to look at what role does this time play in the story of our lives, our partnerships and families, what meaning will we derive from this? So um, all that to say, and I realize look, now looking at the clock, I've gone way over time, but I hope this has been helpful. Thank you so much to Dean Zvankovic for the opportunity to talk with you all. Um, and thank you to all, to all of you for listening. Um, good luck to all of you. And if you want extra support, for this very unique time, um, the ECU Family Therapy Clinic is seeing everyone from their own homes through telehealth. So give us a call. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay home. Thank you all. Go Pirates. And I am going to see if I can figure out how to end.